trying to be stupid. This time we're supposed to be doing solid liquids and gas. Okay. So this was to start off liquids. I like a triangle, red triangle, triangle, circle, all kind of shape. What kind of shape come out of your bubble in the end, regardless of the one? It was. Do you think that it's going to make a bubble cluster, or do you think it's not? All right, put your straw in. Now you got to blow out. Look at that. Now that is a lot of bubbles, isn't it? All right. Now, quick, tell me a color you see. Red. Can you see color in your bubbles? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. We learned from an author. That the Earth is a huge magnet, right? Yes. Yes. So we're gonna test whether that's true or not, because we can read a lot of things, but we often can really see it with our own eyes whether what we're reading is true or not. One's negative and positive, then they'll attract, and if they're both positive and they're both negative, then they'll um, repel. STEM has changed my um, instruction in many different ways. Um, one way is that when we do a unit of study, um, the ending point is not just a multiple choice um, test. We have to um, create something with uh, gain information. The team works out better because we can both think of a, same, of, of a different idea and we can try out both ones. What have you created if we're adding those layers right there, Haley? A rectangular prism. Knowing about STEM education has changed the way I plan and deliver my lessons. The key to doing this correctly is to integrate the subjects as much as possible. For example, in a recent math lesson I taught on finding the volume of rectangular prisms, I had the students in my class participate in a series of virtual activities in which they discovered the volume formula all on their own. During the same week, the students used what they learned about volume and rectangular prisms to create a blueprint design for a child's toy box. I selected these activities so my students could apply this to other real-world scenarios. Hands-on learning experiences encouraged by STEM result in high student engagement and authentic learning. Um, being aware of um, STEM and what's going on in the world around us really does change how we um, deliver lessons and plan because we um, want to always include things from the real world into our lessons and we want our kids to be aware of even possible careers that um, they could have one day that relate to science, technology, engineering, and math because that those are the fastest growing careers you know out there right now. Actually yesterday introduced the word statistics, they haven't really seen it before, and we're talking about statistics and data and they have the background from yesterday and they did some activities with recognizing statistical data and how to ask statistical questions and today we are going to take that a little further and um, learn about the career of a statistician and what they do and then apply that to um, an activity with the Super Bowl where we're going to use measures of central tendency to um, try to make our best predictions about what might happen based on the mean, median, and mode. Without math, there would be what, a lot of careers you could do. Because well, most every career is based on math. I love STEM. STEM is how I teach. I like to put it in their hands. I want the kids to feel it. I want them to think about it. I want to redirect a question with a question. I've already done this. I want them to do it. We have a recorder, a speaker, a leader, and a maintenance person. Now, the kids stay in the same seat in the same lab team all year long, but their chairs are going to change. So when their chairs change, their roles change. They're in pit crews now. We have a crew chief, and we have a driver, and we have a, you know, tire changers and different things, and everybody has their role. 
they care because it's their car. They made the car, they tweaked the car, they're in control of the car. You know, if I just gave them some data and said, here, go average it, is it any good, how close did you get? They don't care. But with this, they care. And so they really take it, and they talk about it, they discuss it, they argue about it, they go back, they tweak their cars, and sometimes we even take them back out here and want to run them again yeah. and start all over. <laughs> now, how many kids do you know won't do math twice? challenges then in planning the instruction is it does take more time to to present the material and the options in different ways but the the flip side of that is uh, the students are much more engaged and, and they're more willing to work so it actually saves me class time in the long run when I don't have to kind of fight that battle what, what the, the students were doing today were they were building models of um, different types of organic compounds and we have not really talked about uh, the organic compounds yet. They did read one article that gave them an overview, and then I just basically turned them loose with a few specific resources, web links, textbooks, um, a, a couple of other articles, but then I also gave them a list of what I expected them to, to have in their model, in their presentations that they will, will give me next week. And from that, they just the benefits to the students, they, they get to kind of cater to their own learning styles. If they're auditory, um, we've got videos that have the, the speaking along with the, the visual. So, um, and of course the video, the visual and the, the kinesthetic, we, we just try to incorporate all that. Students on their own, for the most part, if they had a choice, they would rather do it themselves, be on their own, not have to deal with anybody else. It's easier. Yeah. But the harder part is working with somebody else and learning how to do that. How do you cooperate? The biggest issue for me uh, coming into this was getting the students out of all test mode, mm -hmm. getting them to work with you know projects, doing projects, and thinking you know that's the focus mm -hmm. of what we're doing as opposed to um, just testing yeah. and, and getting ready for EOCs, and EOG, whatever it is. Program controller. The centerpieces of the class are your projects, are your activities, and uh, that's what we're. Doing.